Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about blood clots and breast cancer. I'll talk about what blood clots are, why we worry about them, and the types of cancer treatments and cancer itself that can increase the risk of getting a blood clot. Before I go on though, I want to invite you to go to yerba.com and get your personalized report. That way, as you're listening, you can find out are these treatments part of your treatment plan? What might you hear about when you go to the doctor? I'd also love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We are always putting out new content, often in response to your comments and questions. So keep them coming. So what are blood clots? I think this is an important place to start. There are two main types of blood clots that I'll be talking about in this video. The first are deep vein thrombosis. Thrombosis, or plural is thromboses, are blood clots in the veins. And a deep vein is one that's in the pelvis or in the chest, and these are the larger veins that drain blood back to the heart. These are not the arteries. These are the veins. Venous blood is not under as much pressure as arterial blood, so it's more likely to move slowly, and that increases the risk of blood clots. We sometimes see arterial blood clots, but these are much less common because arterial blood coming out of the heart is pumped under higher pressure and has more velocity. Deep vein thromboses usually cause trouble when they're in the leg veins. When they're in other parts of the body, like the arm, they're much smaller. So when they get formed or when they get dislodged, which I'll be talking about more in a minute, they are the smaller blood clots cause many fewer problems. In the deep veins, however, the blood clots are larger because the deep veins are larger and this can obstruct blood flow from getting back to the heart. So the most common, sort of the stereotypical way a deep vein thrombosis shows up is with swelling in the leg. And people will, with a deep vein thrombosis, will describe relatively sudden onset of swelling, usually in one leg, rather than both legs. So it's not edema in the legs, where the legs get dense when you put on your socks or compression stockings, but even without anything like that, the leg gets swollen, and that's because the blood from the leg can't get back to the heart. Now, these are symptomatic in and of themselves. They cause swelling and cause some pain and should be attended to right away. They also cause problems because when they leave the deep vein of the leg, they can go to the, through the heart to the lungs, and that's called a pulmonary embolus. So if something leaves the vein in the legs of the pelvis, goes through the heart and then to the lungs, that's called a pulmonary embolus. The, the clot has embolized from the deep vein to the lung. Now that sounds serious and it's because it is. And the way these present, pulmonary emboli, present usually with relatively acute onset of shortness of breath, but not always. There can also be wheezing. There can also be a cough or chest pain when you take a deep breath. Now I say relatively acute because people can have one and then another and then another pulmonary emboli and that can make the small ones don't cause as many symptoms, but many of small ones or a large one certainly cause more symptoms. So why are we talking about this on Yerba? Why, what's the relationship with cancer? Well, in people with advanced cancer, showing up with a pulmonary embolus or a deep vein thrombosis can be sometimes the first sign of cancer. So somebody comes in with pulmonary emboli or deep vein thrombosis, and eventually they're found to have cancer throughout the whole body. We can see this with breast and other cancers. It's also the case that after being diagnosed in particular with advanced breast cancer, that somebody can develop a deep vein thrombosis. And this is because cancer itself can make the blood, for lack of a better term, stickier and more likely to clot. 
We see this with pancreas cancer, we see it with gastric cancer, we see this with people with brain tumors, with breast cancer, with ovarian cancer, so and other cancers as well. But the blood itself becomes more likely to clot because of the cancer. There are also cancer treatments and events that can happen that increase the risk of blood clots. The first of which is surgery. So people who get have surgery are more likely to be at bed rest and less likely to be active. If you've already had surgery, you have probably recall the instructions to be really active. You may have been given shots of a blood thinner called heparin. And that's really common regardless of the type of surgery. Even if somebody hasn't had surgery for cancer, really any surgery, being under anesthesia and being immobile, increases the risk of blood clots. The other thing that can increase the risk of blood clots is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, especially after or before surgery, that combination in the setting of a cancer increases the risk of blood clots. And this is something that we in cancer medicine are very aware of. So you'll hear us often talk about ways to decrease the risk of getting a blood clot. In people with ovarian cancer, this is just a short aside, people before surgery who get chemotherapy are often put on a blood thinner to try to prevent blood clots because the risk can be quite high. It's not nearly as high in breast cancer. It's partly the chemotherapy that's used and also the location of the disease. The cancer is not in the pelvis when people are having surgery for breast cancer, whereas it is for ovarian cancer. The other thing that can increase the risk of blood clots is tamoxifen. We have a whole lot of videos, a whole playlist on endocrine therapy, including tamoxifen. But briefly, tamoxifen looks like it's an anti-estrogen to breast cancer cells, but looks a little bit more like estrogen to blood vessels. And just like hormone replacement therapy and oral contraceptives and even topical birth control, all of these things make the blood a little bit stickier, just like pregnancy does. So in people on tamoxifen, there's a slight increase in the uh, risk of blood clots. And that risk increases over time, though interestingly enough, most blood clots occur in the first, teen, first 18 months of tamoxifen therapy. There are also some individual personal risk factors. Used to be the case that we told people that obesity was a risk factor, and that actually turns out not to be the case. It is something that obesity can be associated with decreased mobility. So if obesity causes an increased risk, it's if people are not able to be mobile. So I've mentioned mobility. The other thing that we know about is long travel, like a long plane ride or a long car ride. Again, that's lack of moving around. And that's another reason why we'll have you uh, wear compression garments or make sure you stop regularly to get up and move around for lots of other reasons as well. And the other risk factor we know about is cigarette smoking. That's why a plastic surgeon or a surgeon, if you're a smoker, will really be counseling you to stop smoking before surgery and during the post-operative period. And also, if you can't stop entirely, to at least decrease the amount. There are a lot of things we can do to, for ourselves to decrease the risk of blood clots. The medical interventions are compression garments, or you might have pneumatic stockings put on when you're having surgery that compress your veins to keep them pumping blood black towards the heart so blood doesn't pool in the legs. And we also use blood thinners. These can be given under the skin or can be taken orally. I hope this has been helpful. Again, if you wanna find out what types of these treatments might be offered to you in your particular case, I wanna invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized Yerba report. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.